Well, I have a PhD in reproductive biotechnology, so the technology of reproduction. Um, I have staff who work for me who are my go-to people, you know, the people on the ground, and they have master's degrees. And the reason for that, um, bachelor degrees are also equally. I have a young lady who has a college diploma in biotechnology. The master's degree is because we do a lot of research. So the master's helps you a little bit understand and develop and problem solve. But I have a lot of technical staff as well, college diplomas um, or bachelor's degrees where, where you're at the bench doing the work. We're constantly throughout the day using math in our head or on paper. Everything from um, just figuring out the solutions that we're using, how much to use, how to make them, uh, especially how to make them, they, they, it's very strict and very, um, you have to be very precise, uh, so math becomes important. Well, we do reproductive programs, so that means anything that has to do with um, breeding an animal, making babies, but, but also reproductive health. So if an animal is uh, sick because of a, of a reproductive problem, or on the positive side, we want them to make babies. So the reason why we're important is, in zoos you have closed populations. So it's important to manage the genetics properly so that they don't become inbred and they're not all sisters and brothers of each other. So we get involved in either bringing in sperm or embryos or, or banking, which means to preserve the material for the future. The interesting thing about the work we do, it's exactly what they do in cows and pigs and cats and dogs and humans. The only thing is we're doing it with species that haven't been worked on before. So if I want to uh, do what's called an insemination in a cheetah, I can try to use a cat protocol, but the cat protocol doesn't always work. So every time we work with a new species, we do a few years of research, two to five years, before we can develop a protocol that works on that species, because reproduction is very, very species specific. One of our more interesting cases is our camels. Bactrian camels are actually an endangered species, not the dromedary, which is the domestic one that is raced and all that. So we have a very valuable male. He's quite a stud. Um, but he's never made babies, so um, he has this issue that he was hand-raised. So he likes people and he's in love with people, not so much in love with camels. So there's some behavioral incompatibility when they don't get along. So what we've been doing is we've been collecting sperm from Yasser for several years and we're using it in an insemination program with the females. We have a few um, young babies that were born not from this program, just on their own naturally. But the, the thing about camel sperm is it comes out very in a gelatinous matrix and what we're trying to figure out is how to dilute it using our math. Um, so what amount of solution to sperm, to make, keep the sperm alive, get it into the female and make babies. So it's a little bit trickier than most species because of the gel matrix. And uh, uh, the sperm, when they're in the gel matrix, they don't move, they just stay there. So you can't get your ratios of motility and all the other numbers that we need. But anyways, we're still working hard and hopefully in the next couple of years, the babies that you do see will be from Yasser. Uh, so when you find something that you're, you're fascinated by, you need to be, um, in, uh, have initiative and be interested in it, that's most likely a really good career choice. And then just pound the pavement till you get there. Don't let anyone close doors um, or say, you know what, there's just no work right now. Volunteer. There's nothing wrong with volunteering. I took my first job uh, in a lab at $4 an hour. That was a long time ago. But it was minimum wage just to say, I really, really want to be in this lab. I want to get in whichever way I can. And, and just. Follow your gut, because usually it's pretty right.